Hello everyone, this is DJ from GarageFarm.net Academy and in this part of the tutorial series I will be focusing on the details. I wanted to make this tutorial a little bit different so that I'll share some general thoughts about um, the renderings uh, and the process, what you need to focus on when you're trying to finish up the work, to close the project, to give this little grain of salt that makes your render finished. Finished, not perfect. Because you can always like Know, polish the render and never finish. Like constantly going back to the same project can give you the feeling of like you're not getting anywhere. So try it. finish it up, like make it final, decide on the things that you want from this particular project and then move on to the next one so that you can progress really and over time you'll see that the, the more renders you do, the more things you notice. So we'll break down the whole finishing process into three parts. One is telling a story of the user so designing the interior for a specific individual with uh, interests and you know, a lifestyle. The second one will be filling in the gaps and that will be just like adding small uh, but necessary details to make the interior feel uh, fully designed. The third part will be final uh, touches which is adding decorations, small stuff, a greenery, maybe books or whatever, putting things uh, into the scene that make it feel more alive and like adding this final stamp over the render. So let's have a quick look of what we already have. We have an empty factory space that's filled with uh, small details of lighting and it has an industrial style but it's pretty empty and we also modeled the hero asset bed to make it a bedroom really and uh, added a uh, cow skin rug just to make it feel a little bit more cozy. So probably we'll need some side tables here uh, or just some closets, keeping the necessary stuff. And also, there's a quite huge space under the stairs to make use of. So, so this one I uh, used for a bathroom. So let's now focus on the user. I've imagined my user as a rock musician. Uh, someone really interested in rock music, also enjoying the industrial style interiors, so that pretty much fits the idea of someone who likes raw, unpolished type of music and provides maybe some not commonly thought of as pleasant sounds. That's why I added some, some elements to my interior, like the corrugated steel cabinets. So in this tutorial I'm not going to show you the process of adding every single detail and of modeling every single asset because that's not the point. Uh, like I wanted to show you more, more of an overview or like stepping uh, one step backwards and thinking about what you really want to add to your scene and why. It's a regular practice to use external assets so you have to like uh, gather uh, a library of models to use in your scenes. You'll be searching online for some things created by, by others so that you can reuse it, maybe tweak it a little bit to your liking or to your specific scene, change some materials or uh, edit this a little bit. So you'll you have plenty of options online to find free or paid stuff to use and this is really no shame. Your work as a visualizer is like compositing from all of the elements, making the final scene uh, Blend together and really not and not necessarily making every single asset. It's just like you know a film director. He doesn't make all of the things in the movie. He makes the whole movie fit to his vision or make a reference to maybe some old masters of painting, for example, Rubens. He had a whole like factory of painters, his students who really did uh, you know, the hard work for him. He just like put this stamp on it because he was the guy who decided what was there on the picture, what, how, it, how it should look like, what's the vision that he wanted to convey in his artwork. Uh, I used also a guitar modeled by our in-house modeler, some assets he modeled, also some of my own stuff and I've also added some small quirky details to make this even more stylized so I had another guitar here old uh, project of mine, so it's a little bit rusty Telecaster. Uh, I've added some picture frame with a uh, just to fill the wall and I'll 
also added a clock made out of a snare drum. And this one I found uh, on BlendSwap, it's CC0 model, so you know, looking pretty decent. And I've uh, edited it a little. And I've edited this a little bit, so we'll just like cut out the half of it and add a chain myself and also the block pointers. So making a clock out of it. So this is an upcycle project. So to make a visualization, you really have to think of it a little bit like an interior designer, like you would be designing. Or you can rely on some reference photo or, or a design of someone else. You know. I also prepared some reference on, online to show you what I mean uh, about you know, finishing up the scene. These are interior photos, and I think some of them are great, some of them are less great. So I wanted to just like talk a little bit about what I think uh, can make our render look better. Well like artwork on the walls. A perfect thing to make a focal point and add interest to your render. This abstract uh, artwork just perfectly fits the mood, the theme of this uh, loft style. And it's also, I love the twist uh, that it has for you know, boho chic. And you can tell that probably uh, some kind of lady lives here that's, who's really fond of uh, kind of like bohemian style uh, you know, fashion it tells a story really this this photo is like full of something that you can imagine was living there or was what's uh, usually going on even th though it seems like just uh, you know photo shoot but it's pretty much a nice stabilized uh, composition with a little bit of a crazy twist like that this raw stuff in the artwork here and there and a little bit of chaos so it it adds up life. I, I really love this shot. For, for example, this one's black and white scheme also really gets things together. Also, the walls. I really love the focal point of this picture here. And also, this, these little things like books over here and, and then these flowers here and there. They just make the shot feel more alive and it's, uh, interesting. Even though they're not really fully in the shot, they, it's, the more they make things that seem shot in a real lived in space or for example this one really nothing fancy just a simple bedroom with a bed and very scarce furniture kind of like monastery style and just a simple simple bed and a, just like medieval thing even the pattern on the rug and this uh, old chest here that tells a story of a style maybe this looks a little bit like a hotel room but you get some interesting uh, you know hippie style psychedelic uh, patterns here and there the images on the uh, pillows and uh, this cool focal point uh, poster here really love this and here for example this shot is for me it's pretty much boring it's uh, you no know, there's nothing wrong with it but this interior seems like totally lacking personality as this is just a bad you know the kind of arrangement as is in any kind of hotel and anywhere in the world really there's nothing wrong in terms of design but nothing really exciting so if I can, if I even look this at this photo, the first thing that I tend to like watch is the greenery here. So this is really interesting, and not the interior. So I'm really much more curious curious about what's lurking in the in the palm trees here. For example, this one. Well, maybe a little bit more interesting with this whole accent wall here. Wall here, but. I would like to see a little bit more of someone living here. So right now it's just like a space to rent. But my point is, you don't always need to like throw in a lot of a lot of stuff. Sometimes you want to get an empty feeling of space. For example, this one, I really like this shot. The composition is like pretty straightforward and. This really gets the message of the interior. It's like super minimalistic interior, even the 
radiator here, it's uh, in this style, in this mood, you get this kind of zen feeling in the interior. And I really like this shot, despite this is really lacking any detail, but I think adding some uh, more stuff to this would just like spoil the, spoil the whole wooden calm feeling, like meditative feeling of the shot. Now have you ever had this strange feeling? Fear of the empty. So now we'll talk about filling the empty gaps. I wanted to talk a little bit about horror vacui, which is Latin for fear of the empty. So this is a tendency in art, especially ancient art, to put uh, ornaments all over uh, the object or an artwork. Uh, and uh, we can use this uh, as a method for our uh, interior renderings, or even if we're going for a very specific minimalistic style, we have to remember that even the empty space, it has its power in the composition and in the design. So um, let's uh, have a look at our Blender scene and check some things need balancing or adding uh, things in spaces that feel a bit empty or not designed enough. So now if you take a look at uh, our interior before adding uh, some of these details, uh, some, some parts feel like a little bit empty, like this corner here for example, or the wall. So that's why I added uh, some elements like this clock, also the curtains. I will be covering curtains in more detail in a separate tutorial very soon. And for example, this big picture frame here to make the composition like closed uh, a little bit more filled with uh, assets and also this uh, picture. Where I've picked a specific picture online, so I found this catastrophe of the train. I think it's really fitting into the mood of this uh, abandoned factory space. I think it fits in with the rock theme. It's really cool. And for all the space beneath the stairs I just modeled really plain, because it's mostly shown as a background uh, for the shots, so it's, it's not like super detailed modeling, minimalistic style. What I want you to get this out of the tutorial is like to think creatively of how you can use this space. So, for example, uh, you could do uh, like many different things with this space. Perhaps just like close it to the closet, or clothing, for whatever. You could make a library with books under the stairs, or just a place to hang out, maybe. You no, know, some chairs, sofa, whatever function this would serve. That's also why I'm not showing the whole process of adding every asset. If you follow the tutorial series, I want you to go and do the work yourself. So just like think, think of your own version of this interior. Add your own private twist to it. Yeah, I really loved one of our users posting uh, his uh, version of, our, of the interior, giving it a Christmas twist and also some of his own textures or different uh, solutions. That's really the point. So that's the spirit, Carl Shackleton. Kudos to you. So now I wanted to add just a little bit of tiny details, the final touches, the little things that will give some life to my shot. So for example, on this empty site cabinet here, I've added a book and also I'll add a plant. You can append this or you can link it. So adding some greenery, like the plant here, I have to sometimes watch what you import into the scene because there's sometimes junk. And also, I've created a bigger plant. This plant looks like this. A concrete base so that it fits our uh, overall uh, design scheme. 
So generally I think that's that's pretty much it and we can render our scene out and check how it looks like. And that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you liked it and found it useful. Really looking forward to seeing some of your works. So don't hesitate to share it online. Uh, join our Facebook group or post some links in the comments. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to get noticed when the next tutorials are coming out. And also join our live streams with uh, interesting people uh, to get some insight in the works of uh, cool Blender artists. So see you in the next tutorials and keep blending.